What's going on America and welcome to a very different episode of Real America. As everyone is very aware, we have had some tragedies in our country. We've had shootings in Atlanta and most recently the shooting in Boulder, Colorado. Although those are tragic and our thoughts and prayers go out to the family, we find it interesting here at Real America that no one's talking about the fact that 25 people were killed in Chicago last weekend, one being a 10 year old boy and one being a police officer. We also know that there was a drive-by shooting in New York as well, but yet no one says anything. In fact, the only thing people really want to talk about is Atlanta and Boulder, Colorado. Uh, that was until they found out that the shooter in Boulder, Colorado was in fact not a MAGA hat wearing white supremacist. It turned out to be a ISIS sympathizer from Syria. In fact, even today, it is nowhere to be found on trending searches or anything in that regard. However, when reports first started coming out of Colorado about the shooting, that was all people wanted to talk about. In fact, people already knew and they already identified who the killer was before they even knew who the killer was. Now, we're not gonna give the killer the airtime that he does not deserve, but here's the big problem. The big problem is a lot of people thought that someone like me was the killer. Yes, a white guy, gun enthusiast that did vote for Donald Trump. Certain people of a certain color, of a certain belief, and of a certain political leaning are now viewed as the enemy. How do I know this? Well, by tweets from the vice president's very niece herself seen here. The Atlanta shooting was not even a week ago. Violent white men are the greatest terrorist threat to our country. Violent white men are the greatest terrorist threat to the country could not possibly be Antifa or Black Lives Matter rioters or uh, ISIS sympathizers that it turned out to be that this shooter actually was. But here's the interesting thing. She's not the only one. In fact, you'll see popping up here, 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 other blue check marks on social media that knew right away that it must be a white person that committed these crimes because he was apprehended. Where they say apprehended means being white. But now that that entire narrative has fallen away, let me explain to you the worst apology of all time. I deleted a previous tweet about the suspect in the Boulder shooting. I made an assumption based on his being taken into custody alive and the fact that the majority of mass shootings in the US are carried out by white men. Now, not only is this the worst apology ever, it is actually factually not true. In fact, the majority of mass shootings are actually carried out by not white men because mass shootings are shootings of four or more, much like the 25 dead in Chicago this past weekend, but it doesn't fit the narrative, so therefore you never hear about it. Here's the issue and here's the thing. All of this, everything you see, is nothing more than an attempt to take away our rights as Americans. They want your guns. They want my guns. Make no mistake about this because there is no other way to say it. They want them and they're coming after them every single way that they can. In fact, just last week I said, watch. After the House passed two new gun laws that are going to the Senate, I said, watch. Watch something happen. Watch something happen that is going to help push this gun control narrative. Now, even President Biden saying he's considering executive action in order to ban Assault weapons. What are assault weapons? I don't know. That's a very good question. AR-15 doesn't stand for assault rifle. It stands for Armalite rifle. So what are we actually talking about? What is an assault weapon, Mr. President? Is it something you deem it to be? Does that include shotguns that can hold more than three shells? What, what, what is it? You don't need an AR-15. It's harder to aim, it's harder to use, and in fact, you don't need 30 rounds to protect yourself. Buy a shotgun. What are you talking about specifically when you say these things? Vice President Harris has now tried to calm down that effort, but the words have already been spoken, the thoughts have already been thought, and the attacks are already beginning on our rights as Americans in regards to the Second Amendment. Let me explain this very clearly. Let me explain this the most calm way that I know how to say it. We are at a dangerous point here in America. It seems like we're more divided than we've ever been. Racial tensions have never been higher. And now we have our First Amendment rights under attack every single day by tyrannical oligarch leaders of big tech 
And now we have our Second Amendment rights falling under attack as well. Our rights and our freedoms as Americans are not up for debate. They never will be. Now, if you want to add to those rights and those freedoms, maybe we can have a conversation. But anything of any kind, any way, shape, form, or fashion, degrading or taking away from a right and a freedom is an absolute ender to all conversations whatsoever because our rights are not up for debate. We as Americans have inherent rights of being Americans to have and bear arms. The founding fathers were pretty clear when they said the words shall not be infringed. You see, we're either constitutionally based or we're emotionally based. And the Constitution doesn't have an asterisk attached to it that says when you're emotionally charged, you can change things. Let me explain this to you. We know that you want our guns. You know it, we know it. Just like Madison Cawthorn said in his amazing speech in the chamber. I speak for millions of Americans. I specifically speak for 700,000 plus Americans in my district. When I say that if you think this bastardization of the Constitution will be met with silence, then you know nothing of the America I know. You want my guns. I know it. We all know it. Well, Mr. Speaker, you could come and take them. I couldn't have said that any better myself. But this attack, having a sitting U.S. president that is considering, even remotely so, even if it never happens, a president that would even consider an executive action to ban weapons of private, law-abiding American citizens, there is a problem here in America. And it's not the citizens, it's the government. We have a right to defend ourselves. And it is proven every single time that good guys with guns stop bad guys with guns. Somebody wrote me and they said, where were all the good guys with guns in Boulder and Atlanta? And my response is simply this, look at the gun laws in those places. All the gun-toting good guys are living in places that they're allowed to be gun-toting good guys. Look at Jack Wilson in the Fort Worth church shooting. If Jack had not been there, that would have been monumentally worse, a far superior loss of life, but a good guy with a gun stopped an evil person with evil intentions like that. Here's the other truth. We will never stop bad people from doing bad things. Bad people with bad intentions, whether you make it illegal or not, will always find ways to get guns because that's what criminals do. They don't abide by laws. In fact, the only people that love gun control are criminals because they're gonna do it anyway. In fact, banning these guns will do nothing more than make the black market skyrocket and tracking these weapons even harder. All I'm saying is this, every single American needs to decide where they stand. You're either constitutionally based or you're an emotionally based American. And to be blunt, we have no room for emotionally based Americans. Our rights and our freedoms as Americans are spelled out as clear as day in the Constitution and our Bill of Rights and our amendments. And we have to decide right here and right now that we the people have the power to enforce what our actual rights are. Well, Graham, you can't stand against the government because they're the, the governing power and authority here in America. And the answer to that is no, they are not. In fact, the actual power and authority in America is spelled out in the first three words, we the people. We the people are the power here in America. We the people elect and decide how things run here. We the people stand up for our own rights and our own authority as Americans. We do not have a gun issue in our country. We have a heart and a government issue in our country. And it's about time that we remember to stand up for our rights as Americans. That's all we have for this episode of Real America. We hope that you will take what we said here today to heart. Because if you don't realize this is a very serious issue, then you're not paying attention. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to check us out on Facebook and YouTube. Follow us there. And as always, I'm Graham Allen. And for those who can't, I'll say it for you. What's up guys, Graham Allen here. If you like the video you just watched, be sure to subscribe to the official Turning Point USA channel to keep up with everything we've got going on now.